Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing an overview and an unboxing of the Vespera Smart Telescope. Now, what is a smart telescope? You've got different types of telescopes. Some can be as simple as a Dobsonian that you just move around the sky, up, down, left and right by hand. And then you can get telescopes that are on a tripod that you point towards the polar axis and you have a motor on it that tracks with the rotation of the Earth a basic tracking mount, and then you can have a computerized go-to mount which will find and track objects for you, but only after you've gone through a setup routine which can take five or 10 minutes, aligning to different stars and putting in data such as the time and the RA and declination, things like that. A smart telescope takes this further and it, it basically takes the setup out of the equation. So you can pop a smart telescope outside, press a button, and it will calibrate itself to where it is in space. And then you just start up an app, connect to the Wi-Fi signal that the smart telescope produces. And then you can select an object, go to it and start building up a picture, live stacked picture. And it's called EAA, Electronic Aided Astronomy. And um, it's becoming increasingly popular and sits between visual observing where you look for an eyepiece and um, astrophotography where you're purposely trying to get the best picture possible. I think it's going to be more important as we go along in astronomy. I think it's going to sort of introduce people to astronomy in future because, um, well, it kind of links in with the mission statement of the CEO and founder of Vionis. I watched a interview with the guy and he said when he was doing outreach that um, he'd show people like the moon and the planets and you get the usual wow because they're really cool. When you get to deep sky objects it's um, it can be a grey fuzzy patch and people are a bit underwhelmed but when you take a live stack picture of it, build up an image over time, you can bring out colours and details. He looked at astronomy as a hobby and saw that it wasn't growing and uh, with his experience of like outreach and bearing in mind that he it was a bit miffed that this great hobby is not growing he thought he would do something about that and started a company called Vionis and uh, got a team together. Before the Vespera there was the Stellina and that was more expensive uh, that was an 80mm Apo it was a bigger it was a bigger device than this, but it was 4,000, which is a bit, bit out of a lot of people's price range. This one's 2,175 pounds, which is, as men, it, which is expensive compared to some of the competitors coming on the market. So we'll be interested to see what this brings to the table. But one thing to mention is that this is produced in France. Um, a lot of a lot of things now are, are put together in China, but I think they wanted, what the CEO was saying is he wanted it close by so they could keep an eye on quality control and just have better control over it locally to them. So I, I'm aware that overheads kind of vary from country to country and it may be more expensive to produce this in France than it would be in, in for example, China, but I don't want to get too political about it. One of, the, one of the things people say is they could put something together that could do the job of a smart telescope for less. And I thought, you probably can. Um, so I went and did a shopping list and went shopping on First Light Optics site to put together something that could do the job of this. And um, I was actually surprised it came to a similar amount, not much less. I've not got the right glasses on, but I've got a, a list that I've put together here. So. To do the job of the optics, I've chosen an Ascar ACL 200 F4 APO for £769, and I'll do the conversions for the total at the end for dollars and euros. Deep Sky Dad EF mount kit and ZWO EF, 105 plus another 210, and that's to take account that this can do its own autofocusing. ZWO ASI Air Mini, £228 and that's because this has got a computer inside it that can do plate solving and um, go to and acquisition and live stacking of objects. It produces a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect to it with your phone. So that's what the SI Air does as well. Celestron lithium power tank, this has got an eight hour battery in it, six hours if you're using the dew control. And um, talking of the dew control, I've selected a Lynx Astro 30 centimeter dew band and a cable, RCA to 2.1 cable to connect it to the power of the SIR. 29 for those two. 
to account for the dew control that this has. This is on a out azimuth mount that's motorized um, with GoTo. So I've, I've selected an AZ GTI for that, two, 265 pounds. And the, the heart of it, which is the camera sensor, is a Sony IMX 462. Um, when I bought mine, it was 280-ish. And this is that camera that I've got here. It's a small sensor. You can see that, but the optics of this are 200 millimeters long. That's quite a short, wide optic. So it will give a reasonably wide field of view and at F4, it will be reasonably fast as well. Uh, it gives three arc seconds resolution, which seems fine to me for a 50 mil aperture optic. That seems like reasonable sampling rate to me. So it will produce a, a reasonable field of view to frame objects. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll pop some, I'll pop the figures into astronomy tools and show you up above uh, how different objects are framed. But also bear in mind, they've also introduced this new software that can diver and take shots in a full frame mosaic as your imaging to capture four times the the area of the sky. So that's uh, that's quite a good feature, it sounds. I'll be interested to have a look at that. Um, it's got cloud storage. You can store up to 800 pictures to the cloud. That comes with it, apparently. I don't know quite what that, that's all about. I'm a bit of a Luddite with that kind of thing, to be honest, but I'll take a look. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the specs. And uh, I think we'll probably go and take a look at it now and open it up. I don't think there's anything else to discuss. Oh yeah, it can save, it can also save to JPEG, TIFF and FITS files. So if you, you can live stack on the screen, but if you want to take it a step further and get the most out of your images, you can export the files to GIMP, Photoshop, PixInsight, whatever you've got, and post-process the images as well. So there is that. I think it's enough theoretical talking about it now. I think, I think I'll go and open it up and we'll take a look at what we've got. Let me see you a bag. So is it from there? It's padded. It's got like a rucksack and a carry handle on top. And uh, let's have a look inside. So there's compartments inside as well. Ooh, the bag. It's a bag with a kind of pull cord. A zip there. And uh, let's have a look. So that's Velcro that comes off and they've kindly placed some filters inside for me. So we've got a, a light pollution filter. And so that's a solar filter as well, so that'd be cool. And the dual narrowband filter. Now that will basically just let through the light from emission nebula. So hydrogen alpha and O3, oxygen free. So yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. But let's get on to the, the main thing, which is the Vesper itself. Ta-da! QR codes, downloading the Singularity app. Got a bubble level to level the tripod. There's an Allen key and some kind of cable. I'm not sure what that's for yet. Probably charging. Oh, that's got a bit of weight to it. That's good. Um, so the tripod, you can assemble it. Feels like it's aluminium or something. Quite nicely machined, actually, that. And do these adjust? Probably, because you need to level it. So yeah, you can you can level the tripod by just uh, twisting out the feet. <laughs> it's 
it's got very smooth lines. But this must twist out. This is the out azimuth mount, revealing the optics there. This is just a blanking plate, but you can swap this with the filters because that's just dead easy, isn't it? You just kind of click it on and off. So that's your 50mm objective lens for the quadruple optics. It packs away. It weighs about five kilograms, I believe. Let's pop it on the tripod. So that cable must be for the power brick here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so that's a, it's magnetic, that bit. So that will connect to somewhere on the Vespera. So the power cord goes onto there and it's like a Apple product. It's just like a mag, mag lock. It's quite cool. Okay, I've got this bubble level thing as well. So where does that go? I think it goes where the charging point is. Yeah, there we go. And then we can use that to adjust the tripod legs to get it level before we hit the on button to observe. Give it a bit of a charge, I think. And then uh, in the next video, I'll, I'll be downloading the Singularity app and uh, taking it outside and using it in anger or joy, hopefully. <laughs> but a big thank you to Vionis for loaning me this review. That's uh, it's really cool that I get to play with these gadgets. I'm, I do appreciate that I'm in a fortunate position. And a uh, special thank you to my channel members and patrons as well. And until next time, uh, take it easy and Astro La Vista.